This week we are in Cairns, more specifically we are in a campsite close to Lake Placid. It's a beautiful spot, we wanted to go further north, but unfortunately this was the only campsite that could fit us around Christmas. So today we are going to take Betty the car and drive to all the beautiful places up north, Port Douglas, Mossman Gorge and whatever we can see along the way. So we're here at Musman Gorge, you can't drive up there with your car, you need to drive in here, find a car park because there's a massive huge car park and then buy a ticket for a bus that will take you to two kilometres to get to the gorge itself. Yep. And this one here is your ticket, yep. we'll show it on the way up and back and the bus is just a park from out here whenever you're ready. I know that I'm cheap. I recognize it, <laughs> but $13 for a bus, to stay in the bus, two minutes to come up here, feels like a repulse. According to someone on the bus ride up here, this used to be open to the public, so you could drive all the way up, park your car and then walk to the gorge for free. But there were some groups that took advantage of this and there were too many busloads of tourists that come in, parked up, camped for the day and ruined it for everyone. That's why they've closed it down to the general public. It's still too expensive. I think we got very lucky because it's been raining so much. The gorge is in pretty much full flow right now. And as you can see behind me, it's very noisy, but it's also very cool. If you walk about 500 meters from the car park, you will see the place where you can swim. Unfortunately, right now is as busy as an Italian beach in August because Christmas is in a couple of days, everyone is on holiday. Maybe if you come here and you want to be alone, try to come very early in the morning. We are doing the two kilometer circuit around the gorge and look how beautiful the stuff is. So these look pretty dangerous and they probably are if you wanted to grab a whole handful, but just touching them like this, they're actually pretty soft. Um, not all that bad. Behind me here is a really good example of the strangler feed that I've talked about many, many times. It takes over a host tree, grows up, kills a host tree, and but lives on. You can see in the middle of this, in the middle of all these roots that have come down, that's the host tree that's obviously died and is in the process of rotting out. And that's going to leave this big, awesome looking construction of roots and strangler feed right there. It's like really cool. An interesting thing about Mossman Gorge is that it's the lower Daintree forest. So to go to the upper Daintree, you will need to cross the Daintree River, which we are not going to do this time. But here we can already get a beautiful taste of the rainforest. This is one of the oldest rainforests in the world and is the only place in which the rainforest meets the Great Barrier Reef. We're all done here at Mossman Gorge, the bloody top spot. Is it worth the 13 bucks for the bus? I'd say yes, for one time only. After that, I wouldn't pay it again because we don't need to see it for a little while. But we're done here now, it's about three o'clock. We are overdue for some lunch. I'm getting pretty hungry. We're gonna go find some lunch. Also, if you come here, try to don't do like we did and don't come during Christmas holidays. That will help. We found out there is a Batch Rehabilitation Hospital pretty close to where we are now. It's about an hour and 20 minutes drive away. We're going to go check that out, see what it's like. Apparently, according to TripAdvisor, there's, it's a very good tour and there's a heap of information about bats and flying foxes. We're going to check it out and see if it's worth it. Looks like we are the only one here. Up, Hello. Where are you two from? Bundaberg. Italy. Italy. You are not a bat. You are black, but you are not a bat. Hello. <laughs> the ones that are in here are the youngest ones, but and so they're the neediest ones. Gotcha. Uh, looking for a cuddle, so don't cool. get too close. They're called spectacled flying foxes because of the rings around their eyes, like they're wearing spectacles. So we've just moved, I think we moved about 25 down out of this section down to the big cage today. So they're getting soft fruits with 
apple as well. And how old are they? So they they come out here when they're over 200 grams, so they're somewhere between two and three months old. Well, they can't fly yet. They'll learn to fly when they're about three, three months old. Um, but at night they do a lot of flapping, getting their wings ready. Excuse me, you two. So there are lots of different species of bats in the world. There's over 1400 and something. They're all mammals the same as us. And the easiest way to think of them is in two groups, the ones that use echolocation and the ones that don't. So we talk about microbats and megabats. So the microbats um, are small echolocating bats that usually eat insects and usually have quite small eyes. The megabats, on the other hand, don't use sonar, so they all have big eyes and they are fruit and or nectar e eating. So most, of the, most of the species of bats in the world are microbats. These little bats are a solitary species and they use camouflage to look like a dead leaf and the stripes like the mid vein of the leaf and then those little yellow dots are like you get on a dead leaf. They have both come into care because they were caught on barbed wire fences or what? You've had enough, all right. <laughs> That was very, very interesting. I learned a lot that I didn't know about the bat population and the fruit bat population in Australia and just how important it is to the environment and the ecosystem. And it is very important. They, they can fly up to 600 kilometers and cross pollinate different species along the way, which is super important. Um, and this hospital does a very important job of healing taking them in and healing the sick and injured ones and they can do up to 900 bats a year that get injured by one tick paralysis and two barbed wire fences and uh, I didn't know there was that many bats injured per year. Um, very important job that these guys do and a very must do experience if you're in this area. So right now we are in Tolja, we are about to, to drive to Mariva because in a couple of hours uh, it's going to start something I have wanted to do for all my life and I never had the chance. We got some snacks for tonight. So we got some sugar for tonight. We got some diabetes for tonight. And some... Um, we got some diabetes and some sh blood sugar and we've got some... This looks like heart disease. <laughs> We've got some pillows to pass out on when we go to our, our sugar coma and we got some nuts. How's it going mate? Hello. Good, how are you? Uh, not too bad for a... Not too bad. For a, what day is it? Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Right, have you been here before? No, never. All right, well look, thanks for coming up and supporting us. Anytime. Uh, keep your tickets on you, it's pre for the purchase for entry. Yep. Radio station is 96.0. Yep. Okay, so you can tune into your car radio there. On FM, the yep. speakers that are in the theatre work though, you can use them if you wish to, it's up to you. No All right. problems. All right, and you, you haven't got the, the back of the vehicle loaded up with fuel, you're not gonna, you're not gonna turn it into a fire bomb or anything like that. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy, I always wanted to come to a drive-in. So we are in the Mariba drive-in. It's $14 to come in and you can watch two movies and you can even sleep here. Unfortunately, we couldn't take the bus up here because it's way too hilly for the bus, so we just came by car. But if you have a smaller vehicle, you can just come here and watch your movies and camp here for free. It's got everything here. It's got a cafe, so if you want to get some dinner, you can get some burgers or some fish and chips or whatever you wanted. There's got cold drinks, got uh, you know, obviously amenities you could use. It should be a good night. If you've never been to a drive-in before, which we haven't, apparently we can tune our car radio into a certain frequency and that will play sound. Or we can reach to the window and get a little speaker and put it here and that's our sound as well. Well, we found out why no one is coming to North Queensland in summer. We had horrible weather for 11 days, so we didn't see the sun whatsoever. 
but today there is finally a little bit of sunlight <laughs> somewhere in the sky so we are trying to go for a day trip to Queranda but first we got some food because we are cheap Aaron is getting harassed by a bush turkey This is my new friend I will call him Barty I'm out at Safety to Coranda and one of the main attractions is the Barren Falls so as we headed straight up and we're here now, we're on a little forest boardwalk and we're going down to check them out It's only a short walk from the car park it will be about 10 minutes walk, 15 minutes walk in the rainforest so definitely worth coming here We are here at the start of the wet season so the falls aren't in full force right now in a few months However, there will be tons more water pouring over every second. So it's not too bad right now, but it will be better at the end of the wet season. Karanda is a small village up in the rainforest that sits on the Barren River. If you're keen on spending a little bit of money, you can come up with the sky rail and down with the train or vice versa. We decided not to do this thing because we're so cheap. <laughs> So we went by road instead, which is still a very fun drive if you like twisty mountain ranges. One of the things that we've found here in Karanda are there are two markets. There's sort of an old original market. It was started in 1978 by a group of local artisans and traders. And they had to run their own markets and ride their own train for two seasons uh, to prove that they were a viable idea. Uh, obviously it was because it's still running today and it's still a massive success. There is also a fake plane right here, if you that your thing. It's actually a real plane, but it was used for a movie. It didn't have to really crash, fortunately. We decided to find a nice shady seat and have a bit of food. Looks like a bit of a picnic. So we got some bread, some cheese, banana, pastry. This really reminds me of when I was a big picker. We really like Veranda, but unfortunately it's very, very touristy. It's sort of a Byron Bay in the middle of a rainforest, but way more, even more touristy than Byron Bay. But definitely worth a visit if you are in the area. But anyway, we're on our way back to Cairns to check out the Botanic Gardens and maybe some beaches if the weather is holding up. Pretty good way to end the day. We're here at a beautiful, nearly deserted beach. Uh, it hasn't rained all day. We've had a bit of sun. It's been a good day. Well, yesterday we didn't end up going to the Botanic Gardens. But talking about Botanic Gardens, this campsite is worth a mention. We are at the Tasman Holiday Park in Cairns and it's so beautiful, it's a bit pricey it's uh, around $43 a night I think but it's beautiful, it has a creek going around it it's tropical forest, a beach, a river in which you can swim it's fantastic, definitely worth a visit if you're around Cairns See the turtles? There's at least three of them There is this bush walk next to the river that takes directly to a dog park I think this is the best campsite we ever stay in Probably also the more expensive, but worth it. You get what you pay for. One, two, three. This is in the dog park. How beautiful is North Queensland? We finally made it to the Botanic Garden after three days saying we need to go to the Botanic Gardens and they are amazing. I came here before and they are as beautiful as I remember. We have been in Botanic Gardens all around in Queensland and these are definitely my favourites. So right behind me is the coffee tree. And these little beans they're not ready yet, but when they are ready, they turn bright red. And you can pick them off, shell them, and inside there's two little beans of coffee. If you're 
If you're coming here, make sure you bring some mosquito repellent because the little buggers are everywhere and you will get eaten alive. I will say one thing about this botanic gardens. It has one of the most, or one of the more densely populated and diverse species selection that I've ever seen in a botanic gardens or gardens in general. I mean, look at the size of that palm. It's bloody huge. Well, after the Botanic Gardens, so we went for a walk in the town and we just got back to the bus. So today was our last day in Cairns, unfortunately. We are a bit sad to leave. We love tropical North Queensland. We hope we will be back, mm, but, but, but not for a while. <laughs> we have to go back down south to go on a new adventure, which you'll find out pretty soon. So if you like this video, please leave us a comment, leave us a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in the next one.